Okay, so welcome back. <coughs> now we're going to do some examples. And we're going to start off with uh, uh, this example here. But notice, okay, so here's the summary of the, the formulas that you should know. Make sure you know these formulas um, because, again, they're going to be helpful for exam situations and things like that. So you're going to want to know them. Um, so here is the first example we'll do is uh, tangent theta uh, is equal to negative 3 fourths and it's in quadrant 2. So the angle is in quadrant 2. So we are going to um, answer some questions. So the first thing is we want to find um, sine of 2 theta. Okay, and so again, we're just going to use the formula. That's going to equal 2 sine theta cosine theta. Why? Because we don't have a double angle here. We, we have tangent of theta. Okay? And they want sine of 2 theta. Well, we're going to use this identity to help us figure that out. <coughs> and it's going to be really helpful. Now, we're going to use the information given to help us figure out what sine and cosine theta are. So since this is in the second quadrant and tangent is negative 3 fourths, so I'm going to go ahead and um, draw my little triangle. So I'm going to draw it in the second quadrant. Okay? And so I know it's, it's negative 3 fourths. I know y has to be positive because y is positive in the second quadrant. And so that means this has to be 3 because it's op a tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so that means the 4 is negative. It makes sense because, again, it's in the negative x direction. And then, of course, we've got our theta. And now I know, again, you could use the Pythagorean theorem, right? You get 9 plus 16, which equals 25, and the square root of 25 is, is 5. And it's always positive because it's the hypotenuse. But again, if you know that this is the 3, 4, 5 triangle, then you already know what the sides are, okay? But if you don't, use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Um, so now that we got this filled out, now we can go ahead and uh, plug in what these these are by definition, right? So 2 sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 3 fifths. Cosine theta is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative 4 fifths. And so again, if we just multiply across, we're going to get negative, right? So we're going to get negative 24 over 25. <coughs> and we're finished with that one. Now the next one asks us to find cosine of 2 theta. Now there are three formulas you could use. It doesn't matter which one you could use. Sometimes one may be similar, uh, uh, easier to solve than the other, but in this case it really do it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use the first one, which is Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now realize that these functions are being squared. So that means I can use cosine and sine and just square them. So I know that, again, cosine of theta is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be negative 4 fifths quantity squared minus sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths quantity squared, and then I'm just going to work it out. So this is going to give me 16 20 fifths minus 9 20 fifths, which gives me 7 20 fifths as my answer. Okay? Now the last one is, of course, tangent of 2 theta. Okay? Now I'm just going to erase this here. So I have more room. So now I'm going to do tangent of 2 theta. And of course that's given down here by this formula. So that's going to be 2 tangent theta over 1 minus <coughs> tangent squared theta. Okay? Now, 
The easy thing is, is we already know what tangent theta is. So this is just really just plug and chuck. Okay, so now we're just going to do 2 times negative 3 fourths over 1 minus negative 3 fourths quantity squared. And so if we just simplify this, we get what? Well, here, this is going to cancel with the 4. So we get negative um, 3 halves. And that's going to be divided by, now this is going to be 1 minus um, 9 sixteenths. Okay. Which then gives us what? Negative 3 halves divided by, well, 1 minus 9 sixteenths is going to be 7 sixteenths. Again, just do 16 over 16 minus 9 sixteenths, which is going to give you 7 sixteenths. And then this is going to be um, the same as the multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's going to be negative 3 halves times 16 sevenths. Okay, now the 2 and the 16 are divisible by 2, so it gives you 1 and 8. And so if you multiply across, you get negative 24 sevenths. Okay, and those are the answers. Have a great day.